Hi everyone and welcome on my channel. I thought I'd just give a, a little bit of my thoughts and comments on my process with this time lapse of the Crab Nebula. So you can see I kind of draw the outline of the first layer. I drew it in chalk, so it's just very easily to paint over, it just disappears immediately. So I did the first layer in red because that's how the picture was. It was composed of several different layers and red seemed to be the bottom layer. I studied the image, the reference image, a few times. Well, more than a few times. I studied it a lot before I actually started painting and that's what I always do with all uh, paintings. I have to study the reference image and see how it is built up because especially paint space it's it's the images you see they look like just normal 2d images but yes they, they are pretty much 4d i suppose they're very dimensional and everything so you have to keep that in mind so it skipped a little bit here so you saw atop the red layer i put a a blue, a light blue layer. Um, unfortunately, I didn't record that. I decided then to go with the inner white spiral thingy. You see, see that I try to soften everything up. I might do a, a, a separate thing someday if you want to know about which brushes I use. I can tell you that I just pretty much just use makeup brushes because they're cheaper <laughs> than the mop brushes you the special mop brushes you can use in the in an artist shop what are they called Ar artist shops <laughs> anyway so so on top the so I have the I have a red layer first then I have a light blue layer then I did a purple layer as you saw and now I'm doing uh, the white details again the core as you can see so you also see that softening things again soften 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 because that's the way it is at this point i'm no longer trying to replicate the reference image proportions exactly because yeah it's just it doesn't it doesn't matter that's why not for me anyway so I'm putting on some white-ish highlights here and there. At this point, I went over the purple because I didn't really like the color of it. As you can see, I kind of the camera doesn't really pick it up very well. I just went over it again. A different purple. Yeah, so it's. It's just layer over layer over layer over layer. The beautiful thing about acrylic paints is that you can just paint over it straight away. You don't have to wait weeks as you as you do with with oil paints. It just acrylics is so easy to paint straight away, which sometimes can be a disadvantage if you want to blend things. But there's there's tricks that you can uh, use to to fix that and do to, to work. To work, to work around it, uh, basically. So again, I think I went over the, the center core maybe 10, 15 times to make it perfect. <laughs> so, oh yeah. So here I started a tedious work, the actual small detail. Again, skipped a bit didn't record. You see a little bit of yellow. So I tried to do a little bit of yellow first but then decided uh, to just do everything in white for in white first and then go over it with the color. So the color of the reference image with the details were mostly yellow and green. So <laughs> so then uh, yeah again I jumped from <laughs> from the details to a little bit more of the color. I decided the red was a little bit faded so I wanted to give it a little bit more <laughs> again. 
And now again I went over the purple because I didn't like the purple color at that point. In some places I wanted it to be a little more pinkish purple, a little bit of a different purple. So there we go, back into the details, add a little bit of more black here and there as well as you can see. Oh, and again, going over the purple with different purple. <laughs> like I said, acrylic is awesome. You can just keep going over everything. Yeah, if you don't like something, just go over it. It's fine. And especially if you do it in very thin thin and watery layers. It kind of creates like a more depth effect as well, which is sweet. Now, like I said before, that's what you want with space because it's all so um, dimensional and you want to have that feeling of dimension onto your painting. Yeah, so there I go again. Back onto the... Oh no, I'm not back onto the details. I'm just doing some cloudiness there. And I think now I'm back onto the details. Yeah, there I go. Look at me go. If only things were that fast in real life. <laughs> They're not. <laughs> I think in total, uh, a probably active painting hours would have been maybe 18 hours, I think. But you have to add on to that other uh, um, time spent on the painting. What I do a lot is I I just sit down and look at what I have of the painting so far, compare it with the reference image, and just study it. I can sit there for 10-15 minutes and just study back and forth reference image, the painting, to see what is different, why does that not give me the same feeling as a reference image and what can I do to make it look better. I do that often. Add maybe three more hours of doing that to the whole process, uh, maybe even more. So you see I'm back onto the, the, the details. At this point I'm using the white the mix in white because it has a little bit of translucent quality to it because it all of those details that didn't have to be all bright and all bleh. and the mix in white gives it a little bit of more of what's the word yeah I can't think of the right word for this moment but Maybe you know what I mean. It gives a little bit of a, of a see-through effect, kind of, you know. <laughs> All those details, so many. I try to follow the uh, reference image, but sometimes I just like was doing details and I just went, did my thing and did what felt right, basically. And then I looked back at the reference image and I was like, oh, that's not exactly the same. But that's fine. Didn't care. Looked good, so as long as it looks good, that's fine. I mean, if I had someone on, that commissioned me and they would say like, oh, I want it to be like exactly the same, then obviously I would take more care. I think at this point I started to use the titanium white to um, kind of fill in the details here and there to um, get more stuff and again the video cut out so yeah <laughs> uh, so all of the like titanium white bits and pieces have been filled in where I wanted it and I started on the colors I started you can see there's already a little bit of color to everywhere it looks yellowish but most of it is actually green um, I painted that when it was a little bit darker, so to me it looked green. It wasn't green enough, obviously, so I'm just going over everything I did the day before. Again. Which is all part of the process. <laughs> layer, layer, layer. I just, that's 
just what it is. Layer, 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 layer. That's what acrylic painting is. I shouldn't call it acrylic painting. I should call it layer painting. Okay. Just ignore that. <laughs> so, yeah, see all of the green. The thing is, when you're working so close to something which you should actually look from a distance, it's not always easy to see if you're doing the right thing. <laughs> so I step back regularly and then I still sometimes thought like, oh, that's not what it's supposed to look like. But you just have to trust the process. In the end, it all turns out to be good and well and yeah, just do it. So I added a little bit of the the stars, it's the inside stars, let's call them. Uh, did uh, the, the the blue glow first, and then the the the, the white dot. <laughs> uh, not sure what I'm doing here. Oh yeah, I'm adding some uh, black, a little bit of blackness to give more shadows, to give more definition, and then I added more a little bit more white cloudiness to give again more dimension to the whole thing. Then I went back in with some more black to give a little bit more like detailed shadows here and there, which is usually at the end some like the last white and black highlights. They totally make the whole painting. Here I was praying all of the stars on it and making the bigger stars actually looked at a reference image to make all the big stars kind of put them in the same in the place they're supposed to be they're not completely in the same place sis same spots yeah I start off with the again the blue glow let me tell you stars big stars like that one of the most difficult things to do because you want them to yeah, not have sharp edges, they have, they, you want them to glow. So, and that was it. Thank you for watching. Bye! <laughs> if you like this video and the time lapses and everything, feel free to subscribe and like. Feel free not to, it's, it's all good. See ya!